All right, so we shall talk about the hundred odd years of forgotten inventions and effects of LANR, that is low energy nuclear reaction, which is for me called fusion, simply. Uh, today, LANR, that is cold fusion, is usually a steady state, low temperature electrochemical process, or sometimes low voltage plasma with low frequency, and it is, uh, or steady state, uh, it is up to 800 uh, C. This is uh, maybe the Rossi type of, of solution. Usually deuterium or hydrogen is used. However, contrary to this range of parameters, in the past, that is uh, 100 years ago, very high voltage transient dusty plasma has been used uh, in the range of minimum 30 to 60 kilovolt uh, and in the repetition frequency was in the kilohertz, megahertz range and, and hydrogen and not deuterium based, hydrogen based. Of course they, they never had anything else. And these devices produced electricity, oxygas, oxy that is the mixture of deuterium and hydrogen, and mechanical energy. What was their secret? It was a catalytic surface-based uh, LENR or cold fusion that uh, kind of surface-based, uh, powder-based uh, cold fusion had a better economy. And uh, it is quite strange that uh, until 1914, that is just right be before the First World War, transmutation was absolutely mainstream. Uh, Colley patterns on uh, G.G. Thompson and so on, some, some 20 people uh, did work on, on this subject, uh, mostly British, interesting, mostly British. No French, no German involvement. However, there was an oddball, a Russian, independently working from the rest of the crowd. His name was uh, Mitkevich. And he uh, discovered that uh, when interrupted uh, arc uh, was used in the experiment, the voltage reversed. That is, the interrupted arc uh, started to work uh, as a generator, not as a passive device that is generating electricity. That was quite a, a strange discovery. And uh, let me show you uh, some of the devices which I have found uh, from the British investigators. They usually use the uh, 250 kilovolts and uh, maybe 100 hertz uh, frequency because they used mechanical interruptors and uh, so-called uh, uh, inductive uh, coils in order to produce these high voltages. Different uh, uh, tube configuration have been used. However, you you see here that they used double wall uh, discharge tubes and it had the advantage that not much outside uh, uh, gas could penetrate into the discharge tube. Yet, and this is strange, they discovered that from ordinary hydrogen, helium was uh, formed, that is, a, a, it's a real sign of transmutation, and sometimes neon. And in the papers, uh, they note that uh, this phenomena is not reliable, but the best results were with palladium. And uh, there were not so good results uh, with, with other material. However, at the very beginning, let's say uh, the first 1,000 discharges, no transmutation is observed. So they didn't realize that the surface of the electrodes must be changed, roughened, in order to start this effect. 
But given them 10 more years, in my opinion, they would have figured out that it is necessary to de roughen the uh, surface that is large surface, which is the most uh, uh, easy to achieve with, with dust, of course. So, no, it's the, yes. Uh, this is the experimental arrangement of Mitkevich. It is very simple. Here you see the, the arc uh, discharge with 110 volts of, uh, of battery. But he made a very uh, thorough investigation. He used uh, not only different diameter carbon electrodes, but copper, aluminum, iron, and mercury as well. And he figured out that with mercury there is no effect whatsoever, simply because in mercury you don't have powder at all. And whenever only one uh, electrode has been mercury, yet the other is, let's say, aluminum, uh, copper, uh, he got effects only, this uh, voltage reversal effects, and the other was uh, carbon. That is graphite, because carbon or graphite is the uh, ideal material to make uh, dust, fine dust. All the rest of the materials, like aluminium, iron, is just not making that amount of dust. Unfortunately, uh, due to the first uh, Russian Revolution, uh, his work uh, stopped, and. Uh, at that time, there was not only the problem what makes the reversal or the reverse kick of the voltage in, in an interrupted or, or discharge, but uh, simply they didn't understand at all what is our discharge or what, what is discharge at all. So this uh, kind of discovery, in my opinion, came 10 to 20 years earlier before uh, the basic mechanism of the discharges was un understood and interpreted. Okay, let's see next. Now, let me show you the inventions which I've, I've found, which are based on the previous effects, which were unfortunately forgotten simply because the First World War broke out and uh, uh, the researchers either went to the Western Front or got a military research uh, uh, job. So actually this kind of high voltage uh, transient uh, transmutations were forgotten. They were so forgotten that not even a footnote ever appeared in, in any books on arc di discharges or nobody ever referred uh, to this set of, uh, of very important and, and potentially influential uh, test, which is an absolute tragedy of the First World War. For example, Soddy, who was the real brain behind uh, Ernst Rutherford's work, was shot down in, in Gallipoli at, at the age of 27. So several bright, intelligent uh, uh, physicists were just shot in the trenches of the First World War. And this is the reason we are suffering here, that always somebody by accident discovers this effect. The first one, in my opinion, was Tesla. <coughs> I shall talk about him later. But uh, I noted with a circle uh, those cases when they thought that they were tapping the energy of the physical vacuum because they realized this effect appears only in case of transients, never for steady state uh, DC plasma, never. You had to excite it with a high frequency. Their conclusion, the energy is coming uh, uh, from ether 
which might be true, but not in this case. So Tesla demonstrated his full electric car in 1931, in the summer of June, in Buffalo, New York. And uh, as an urban legend, uh, this demonstration uh, was uh, not completely forgotten. Uh, Tesla turned a Pierce Arrow, it's a, then it was a luxury car. He threw away the internal combustion engine and put the uh, electrical motor and his uh, high voltage uh, discharge devices. He never patented it, never, but he talked extensively in his lectures and, and uh, interviews about uh, transmutation and high voltage and, and discharge tubes. And uh, we are quite familiar that he was working with carbon button lamps and there he explicitly uh, stated that these carbon button uh, lamps, which were not developed commercially, are so shiny that it is impossible that that amount of uh, input uh, electrical energy is, is enough to make uh, such an amount of, of uh, bright uh, radiation. So he realized that something fishy is here. And, uh, in secret, he moved on to make uh, electricity. In my uh, patent application, I broadly uh, outlined uh, what might have been uh, his invention. Of course, the background is his single wire technology. When uh, he transmitted very high frequency, very high voltage electricity via a single wire. It is a useless technology except plasma physics, except for this case. For this case, uh, to create a high voltage, high frequency, the single wire technology is by far the superior. But by now, completely forgotten, nobody is ever using it to say less that it is never thought Quite the opposite, we are taught at school that the electricity must come in a closed circuit. It's not true. You can uh, use a single wire uh, to transmit uh, high frequency electricity. Of course it has uh, an electrosmog, quite uh, uh, severe, but it is possible. So it's a pity that it has been forgotten. So. Uh, the Elon Musk's Tesla car was actually named uh, due to this urban leg legend that uh, there was a real electric car uh, in the 30s which did not require uh, gasoline at all. So this urban legend kept on and this might have led to the, the Tesla car. The second uh, guy who discovered uh, in the 19, uh, uh, eight, just at the end uh, of First World War, uh, Henry Moray, a uh, young uh, radio amateur uh, at Salt Lake City, and it produced also electricity. And then after I shall talk about all uh, other absolutely unrelated uh, inventions. All these guys stumbled into this uh, phenomena independently and by accident. Of course, not by reading uh, uh, textbooks. I shall come back later uh, to this. Uh, Henry Moray uh, was actually building uh, a crystal radio or detector radio which is a very simple circuit and it used to be very familiar until the 50s. Now it's nobody, no, no teenagers are building uh, crystal radios because simply long wave radios, uh, AM radios, no longer in, in existence. But in my opinion, he replaced here, uh, which is the earphone, uh, which is in fact an inductivity, a high voltage uh, 
<clears throat> corona discharge tubes, and uh, he had an extreme advantage that is in Salt Lake City the air was always very dry. So he, he had his antenna was an ideal source of very high voltage, low current power su uh, supply, which nowhere else in the world exists. M maybe in the Death Valley or, or in the Sahara, but in the Sahara nobody uh, played uh, fooled around uh, with crystal radios. So with, with this just, uh, with just this uh, lucky movement, he realized that uh, in his earphone there was a very loud uh, continuous uh, cracking where there was no radio station. So he realized that energy is coming out from an unknown source. This was his first uh, lucky observations out of sheer luck. And he never told, uh, uh, later never disclosed uh, what was it. Forty years later, I just, uh, I think I have solved uh, this riddle. What was the main initial idea for him? But actually, uh, this kind of, uh, of periodic power source of high voltage from the antenna was producing uh, via coronary discharge and, and uh, tritial pulses up to 100 kilohertz uh, frequency uh, for coronary discharge. This was his lucky start and uh, he might have used in his uh, initial uh, tube one or two drops of water and that's enough. So his second uh, invention, because uh, of course uh, the pin uh, diode has uh, limited uh, capability of current, he discovered the first transistor, a germ germanium based, uh, this is the drawing. This guy had an extreme gift, he had an open channel from above, I just cannot explain by otherwise discovering uh, the secret of this uh, early cold fusion and producing actually electricity, discovered the first uh, uh, semiconducting uh, transistor device and he built uh, radios with the help uh, with, without uh, uh, amplifier tubes and patented later uh, a device which was uh, able uh, to kill cancer cells and none of them, none of these inventions survived. He kept the secret for him. No, uh, in his only uh, patent he smuggled in his power producing tubes, very interesting, uh, high surface area uh, tubes which would, I mean, the details would worth uh, at least one hour of discussion, but we don't have time for that. This is the single wire power supply, which he used for several of his experiments, which is unknown today. And he patented actually two quite different uh, uh, power tubes. One of them was actually to make uh, high frequency, high voltage pulses and the other, most probably this was the, the power tube which produced uh, uh, the excess energy by uh, producing dusty oscillating dusty plasma and uh, uh, the charged uh, clusters of oscillating dust actually always <coughs> delivered uh, a certain amount of electricity to the anodes and thus he was able to collect directly electricity, not, not heat. And in my opinion, this is far superior than heat. So whenever you are producing heat, there is a chance that one can produce uh, electricity also, but requires far more sophisticated wiring. Let's see the next. So again, uh, we are uh, 
with the table and the next invention uh, will be from the, fin from the 50s by uh, G.B. Coleman and uh, his uh, invention produced electricity. I don't know anything about this guy, nothing. I have no idea who he was, how come that he discovered this effect. He patented it as a battery which is never exhausted, never. And again, a very strange form of dusty plasma, what we shall see here. It might be not detailed enough, uh, and there are three figures, but uh, he used uh, this discharge tube here, which was filled with powder uh, and with different layers. And of course, he had water in, uh, in the crystalline form. So it was there. And it is a part of a high frequency oscillating circuit and even an, an outer magnetic field, which I'm not sure whether it is possible uh, or necessary, but uh, he used it and the transverse magnetic field. Very unusual and uh, to the best of my knowledge, nobody has ever even attempted uh, to do it. Just by reading the patent, you are just unable to repeat this experiment. So many important parameters are missing. So, I mean, uh, repeating his experiments requires, in my opinion, five years of, of patience, at least. All right. Now, after Coleman, uh, a fellow Hungarian, uh, Joseph Pop, uh, comes who, who invented an inert gas motor uh, which uh, apart from inert gas used water also as a fuel. This is uh, the drawings of his first uh, patent actually. Uh, Bob, uh, shall we stop because the 20 minutes is most probably over. It was a single stroke engine. This uh, invention was actually intended as a gun. Just one huge explosion with the help of water and inert gases. But the uh, asymmetric uh, arrangement of the electrodes is quite uh, visible. He just uh, uh, arranged uh, an extremely high, highly intensive electric field, pulse, a pulse. And, uh, and some water, uh, inert gases, and of course some dust has been always created at each impulse. I have seen some uh, blurred video about this experiment uh, blowing apart uh, a, a gun. Now these are actually drawings from his second patents where you can see uh, sharp electrodes. So actually he discovered the shoulders effect before shoulders. And uh, instead of a single uh, explosion, he used this effect uh, for the so-called internal combustion engine. Actually, he, he um, hacked uh, several internal combustion engines. Uh, cylinders were closed, no input, no uh, output of, of gases, no, not, nothing, but it has uh, been seen uh, running uh, for several of these uh, changed or hacked motors. This is his first Leyland uh, engine, four cylinder as far as I, I know. This is uh, the same motor from a different angle, you can see the cylinders here. Now this is the head of the cylinder. You can see here the sharp electrodes. Later he used uh, two pairs of, of electrodes. This is very similar to your uh, arrangement actually, but basically it's the same. He doesn't use the, in this arrangement, acoustical resonance chamber, but in his third patent, 
he already used the resonant acoustic chambers with the two electrodes. So we are roughly there. This is the asshole uh, pop. He, he was absolutely, absolutely paranoid. Absolutely. Slightly louder. Sir? Slightly louder. Slightly louder. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is my, my loudest. So quite sophisticated and, and complicated. And in my opinion, this is not the right approach. But anyway, he used, uh, instead of thermal energy, uh, as a series of explosion, uh, internal combustion engine, that is uh, mechanics. Quite strange that even today there are some people who would like to repeat his experiments. Some of his engines are still intact, but he never passed on the secret of the uh, inert gas uh, mixture. Uh, this is uh, his lab, and he made his inert gas mixture uh, in this glove box. Another uh, uh, mixing unit, quite sophisticated, in, and in my opinion, overcomplicated. Uh, this is the uh, uh, two-stroke... Uh, no two-cylinder engine. Here you see the two cylinders. He built several engines. And this is the electrical board of this engine with the timing when the spark uh, will commence, how long does it uh, will uh, take place. Actually, on the first demonstration, uh, Richard Feynman, the physicist of California Institute of Technology, was there. And he thought that this must be a hoax. He started to, to fiddle around with the electricity, and the engine explode, and, uh, exploded and killed one spectator and seriously wounded uh, uh, two others. So Caltech had to pay a heavy compensation. But uh, Feynman, who really participated in Manhattan Project, was absolutely jealous and, and uh, proud. And he told that this uh, guy speaking uh, in a, a foreign accent has no idea about uh, nuclear physics. And only he, Richard Feynman, is capable of judging what is working and what is not. So actually, until the very end of his life, he maintained that this uh, must have been a hoax. So had Feynman is not so stupid and uh, Pop is not so jealous, this could have kicked off in 1968 uh, cold fusion in another form. But both, are, both parties were just jealous, overproud, and stupid. OK, the next one is again a Hungarian, whom I happen to know personally, Janos Jekka, who invented an oxygas car. And this is just my drawing. Uncle Joe, as I called him, uh, at home made a welding device, very simple, which I told you in, in the office. Very thin silver wires acted as electrodes, uh, very high voltage, 20 kilovolt uh, uh, voltages, uh, one-sided pulses at 10 kilohertz were used. And he claimed, which I doubt, that he was e even able to separate hydrogen from oxygen. I'm not sure whether is it true or not, but he, he wanted to make at home a moonshine uh, oxygas welding machine, and he realized that 500 uh, watts of electricity gave him 2, 3, or 4 kilowatts of thermal energy 
from the welding machine. This was the uh, original discovery which led him actually to the development of a uh, oxy gas car, a Moskvich uh, 407, and which he used actually, drove several hundreds of kilometers with uh, a small amount of water. And uh, these were uh, the tubes which we uh, built uh, according to his uh, instruction. And here was uh, a gauge, uh, a temperature uh, gauge. And uh, actually, uh, this is uh, his biggest mistake because he never knew what makes this phenomena tick. So he had no grasp what is important, what is not. So when we had the opportunity to rebuild his machine, he suggested us to use this kind of perforated stainless steel electrodes instead of the high surface area, thin silver wires uh, electrodes. And therefore, we never had really the chance of success but I have learned it five years later when he told, no, his original electrodes were not uh, these uh, 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 flat plate uh, and uh, stainless steel stuff, but uh, very thin uh, silver wires. But then it was too late. Uh, this is uh, from a, a close uh, quarter the electrode, which never worked. We just threw away the effect uh, due to this. Again, another uh, view of the, of the tube. We used to work for half a year without any single result on this subject. It was absolutely maddeningly frustrating experience. Now I shall talk about uh, two other guys, Chernetsky and Korea together, who both of them uh, thought that uh, they discovered uh, how to tap the energy of fluctuating uh, vacuum. Alexander uh, Chernetsky, a Russian professional, highly skilled plasma physicist, with the help of Nobel laureate uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, Russian hydrogen bomb uh, maker, I forgot his name, but it will come to my mind. They teamed uh, together and they figured out that excess energy from hydrogen uh, plasma, from oscillating hydrogen plasma, is certainly coming from ether or, or the physical uh, vacuum. This is uh, his uh, uh, experimental tube. Here you see a pellet of uh, titanium hydride where the hydrogen is stored and it is heated from the outside. So depending on the heat, uh, the hydrogen pressure inside this tube can be regulated. So he used, like you, titanium hydride. And very simple are discharge uh, tube. But it was part of an oscillating circuit. So uh, this is again a very similar uh, <coughs> oscillating circuit uh, connected uh, coupled oxy uh, oscillating circuit, what Moray used. And this guy discovered it independently of Moray. This was our test uh, device. And we really found that sometimes in the interrupted art discharge, self-generating uh, oscillations appear, very powerful oscillations. I was the head of the team, of a 10-member team, whom we, we tried to replicate these experiments. Both the current and the 
uh, voltage were of, uh, of very high amplitude oscillations. But the most telltale is that both uh, current and voltage reversed. So in this quarter, actually, it's quite apparent, visible, that the tube uh, behaved uh, as a generator. It was generating electricity. These are the voltage and the current. This is the current, this is the voltage, this is the zero at the very middle. So when the uh, electricity is reversing and the voltage is reversing, we are in this quarter. And in this quarter, uh, electrical energy is not dissipated like in an ordinary discharge but electricity is generated, which is absolutely off the te textbook physics. And this is, the, in my opinion, the easiest area of experimental investigation. And this is what Mitkevich, the Russian Mitkevich, discovered about 100 years before. But it hasn't been followed, on, unfortunately. But this effect uh, really does exist. This third figure is, is gained that uh, we filter out, we have filtered out local oscillations. So it's more easy to see that uh, the uh, discharge tube is producing electric energy. And uh, now I shall show you some other tubes by uh, Alexandra and Paolo Correa, they are Canadians, but Portuguese born. They use the high surface area discharge tubes uh, of pulsed uh, uh, glow discharge. Uh, you said that you are using also pulsed uh, glow discharge, but of a different. Then it, 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 it is either glow discharge, arc discharge, or corona discharge, there are no more. So the corona transferring over to glow. This is the same stuff they, they used. They applied uh, and received uh, three or four patents. It is in the uh, public uh, domain now. They gave up after 20 years, they couldn't get financed. Simply because I think uh, they found the wrong uh, a technical environment because their tubes were literally ruined after half an hour simply due to surface erosion. So it did produce the dusty plasma, this tube. However, the amount of dust was so immense that uh, and, uh, the tube became electrically conductive simply because the dust settled on the uh, glass walls and become conduct conducting electrically, and then it became useless. But the phenomena, they, they discovered uh, quite independently from Chernetsky, the phenomena is true. Actually, Kora discovered uh, this uh, reverse uh, voltage effect, the, the energy generating effect, while cleaning the surface of an aluminum plate. So he was also like you, a surface cleaner. This is one of our test uh, uh, device, uh, the test pad, and on color you have, you can see some of the tubes. And on this tube, though barely visible, there are hundreds of little tips. I wanted uh, a marriage between the Korea effect uh, and the shoulders effect. And I expected here an effect. Uh, I gave it uh, this tube to my engineers to test it, and he lied to me. He lied that there is no effect whatsoever. And uh, for 10 years, uh, therefore, the, our line of research just, just went astray. We did uh, practically useless work, simply because we couldn't get the fundamentals well. 
again brand new large surface area uh, Correa tubes, a Correa test end. You see uh, the uh, condensers, batteries, and this is uh, the test tube itself. This is uh, the same test stand from another angle. Uh, one can see different uh, electrodes, different test tubes. Uh, this is uh, mountable, so one can take it apart. Uh, these are permanent. But as I told you, in a half an hour, the dust settles on the, on the uh, surface of the glass. And uh, it's just, it was just a nightmare. It was useless. These are already the low surface area uh, Chernetsky tubes with external magnets also. The external magnet never gave us any better results. These are the uh, surface uh, protrusions, sometimes quite sharp uh, pins uh, resulted, which is absolutely unusual, cannot be explained on textbook uh, electricity because uh, all of them showed a, a sign of vorticity, which shouldn't be there, actually. Mm -hmm. Arc. 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 Transient, and only transient yeah. arc does it. Uh, steady state arc doesn't do it. This is a quite different story. <clears throat> it leads to biology and paranormal phenomena, but it's a, a different story. I don't want to, to talk now. This is another crater, which uh, Korea investigated and knew that it is absolutely necessary in order to have this excess energy effect. So this uh, roughened surface. All right, now we shall get to the last invention of Edwin Gray, who was again a loner, died under uh, suspicious uh, circumstances. Uh, oh yes, uh, I forgot. Uh, these are some of the test results uh, by Korea. You see here the, the, reverse, uh, the reversal of voltage, sometimes uh, minus uh, 250 volts. And this is his uh, uh, circuit. This uh, part of the circuit is capturing the excess electric impulses. Do you mean the reversal of voltage or generated voltage? Generated voltage. So he gets a more generated yes. excess voltage. And uh, when uh, only a couple of pulses are done, these oscillations do not take place, or very few. After some, uh, some minutes, there are more oscillations. And after, let's say, uh, some additional time, there are quite heavy oscillations. So the surface must be rough, oscillating charges and uh, pseudo charges must be necessary, in my opinion, to help neutron uh, formation. These are, as you see, very significant uh, oscillation, both in voltage and current. These are necessary in order to this oscillation to produce excess energy and capture it with the help of an oscillating circuit. Here you see uh, uh, one oscillation which uh, carried some 1.5 kilowatt power excess power. Okay, here we are. This is uh, the U.S. patent of Gray. It has kind of two uh, inventions in one. Of course, the Chernetsky uh, spark gap or interrupted arc discharge. And here he uses very fine mesh 
resembling uh, Henry Moray. Large surface area discharges. And he's uh, using in his uh, patent, as he described, uh, uh, of course, uh, transient, very high voltage uh, inductive pulses, electrical pulses uh, created by inductivity. All right, that is the end of presentation. So, actually, what we see here, what we saw here, that these effects were always discovered by accident and always with the help of uh, transient uh, dusty plasma discharges. It's a must. But it is surprising how many different uh, discoveries were made and then completely forgotten. Society is just, I mean science as a society, is just not sensitive to this huge area. <laughs>